We are back for more of this match between Craig Holbrook's team, KOD, and Ben Vestal's spare tires from the mixed team tournament at Park Place Lanes. Starting the fifth box, Craig Holbrook's team has a 43 pin lead, but Ben Vestal's team has two marks to fill to Craig's one mark. So this is uh, still anybody's game. And there's a great shot by Celeste Buckmore for a spare on lane 17. She converted that 4-7-10 split. Meanwhile, Joanne Rosano on lane 18 takes a nine box for Craig Holbrook's team. Let's take another look at this spare by Celeste Buckmore. She hits the, there's a piece of wood behind the four and, and that causes the uh, four pin to go over and, and get the 10. So that's gonna give her 47 with a ball working in the fifth. What you been today, Mark? And let's see what she can do to cut the lead down. Celeste puts seven on that spare to, to get to 54 through five. Joanne Rosano looking at a uh, diamond on the left side, two, four, five, eight, off a one, three pocket hit. And she takes out, uh, takes out the five, eight, just going, sliding by the two pin. Wow, and Celeste with a nice bid on that five, six, ten split, but the, uh, <clears throat> that front piece of wood just spun around and it didn't go back and take out the five and six, it just took out the ten. Ten box for JoJo and also ten for Celeste. So that'll bring up, uh, that'll bring Lynn Thompson and Sarah Vestal back up there. Lynn is working on a strike that she had in the fourth frame. And Sarah has, uh, let's see, she has 29 after four. Lynn has 47 plus the spare fill. And Lynn goes by the head pin for just a, uh, a seven fill on the strike. Lynn will take an eight, giving her 62 after five. Sarah Vesta will also take an eight in the fifth. She's got 37 through five. Obviously wants to get back on track after starting out the match with a nice spare and uh, struggling since then. Lynn leaves the, uh, <clears throat> the bucket the same uh, 2458 that Joanne Rosano just had. And meanwhile, Sarah leaves the 136. Wow, that was a great bid by Lynn at the diamond, but it didn't go. And Sarah converts that 136, running it right down the line. Good to leave one hanging at this point. And Lynn takes a 10. So that will bring up Mike Walker, who is working on a strike, and Hawk Hallis on the other side for Craig Holbrook's team. Mike is, uh, and there, I think, that's another strike for Mike Walker. That's a double. And Hawk Hallis picks up the 10 pin for a spare. So this match is starting to heat up. Mike with that double strike. Let's see what Hawk can put on the spare. Hawk Hallis bowls out of Central Park Lanes in East Boston among other locales. And Mike Walker with a nine, almost a triple strike. Mike pulls out of the Big 20 in Scarborough, Maine, where he also works. And Mike is all over that spare all over that six pin. So that gives him 97 with a ball through six. Hawk Hallis with a 10 to give him 76 through six. And so that brings up Dave Dupuy and Chris Winniars again. 
Dave punches out the half Worcester on the left side. Two and eight. Chris with a, looks like that is a seven drop, leaving the three, five, and ten. Dave Dupuis with a nice bid on that half Worcester, got everything but the seven and ten. And Chris just goes by that three. He was trying to get the outside of it and get the three to take out the five and have the ball go over to get the ten, but he uh, didn't get the three. That's going to be Dave Dupuis with a ten box in the fifth and uh, Chris Winniers with an eight. Dave drops six. I think that's a two, four, five, or a two, four, seven, eight. I think that eight pin is up for Dave Dupuy. Chris Winniers has the two, four, seven, ten with a piece of wood that might give him a chance to uh, get some help on this. almost parallel to the lane, it looks like. Maybe he can hit the left side of the cap. And he kind of tries to do that, but gets a little too much of the wood and takes the two and the seven, leaving the four and 10. Dave Dupuis with a 10, 66 through six. <clears throat> Chris Winniars with a nine. He's got 58. Now the anchor bowlers, Greg Holbrook and John Starner are up once again. John Starner is working on a strike. He's got 45 plus the strike fill through four. Craig Holbrook drops seven. John Starner with a six drop, leaving the one, three, seven, and eight with a nice couple nice pieces of wood behind the one and three that might uh, give him some help with that. And Craig Holbrook makes the uh, spare. Got a little help from the wood as uh, we'll give you a replay in just a moment. Meanwhile, John Starner with a nine fill on the strike. And John will finish up the frame. Knocks the head pin down for a 10. And let's have another look at this spare by Craig Holbrook. Pretty good hit here, pretty solid on the 2-4, but then it looks like the seven is gonna stay up, but a piece of wood comes off the wall and knocks another piece of wood into the seven. So that's a spare for Craig in the fifth. But it's, the match has tightened up a little bit with the, uh, the marks by spare tires, especially the double strike by Mike Walker really tightens it up a little bit. Craig with six on the spare. He's got 69 through five. And does not convert to two, four, five, seven. You know, John Starner with two, four, ten over there in the left lane. Lane 17, he gets the two, four. Okay, 10 for Craig. and also a 10 for John Starner. So through six, Craig Holbrook's team has 357 and Ben Vestal's team has 340, but they've got two spares to fill. So it's essentially a tie match at this point. Those two marks go a long way toward making up the 17 pins. Pretty much an even game. And there is a strike by Celeste Buckmore. Let's take a look at that right away. She almost sticks on the approach a little bit. She does stick on the approach, but manages to keep her balance and stay behind the line, and the ball is just perfect. It's not bothered at all. Nice high 1-3 pocket hit, and a uh, piece of wood comes off the wall to take out the four. Meanwhile, Joanne Rosano hits the head pin, but goes uh, right through the middle for a spread eagle. in the seventh.
so she will probably just try and work this out. Wow, she is it gonna go? Not quite. Here's uh, she almost converts the spread eagle. Let's take a look at this. She cuts the two pin over into the 610 and a piece of wood comes back and almost takes down that three pin. Really nice bid right there. So it'll be a nine box for Joanne Rosano. That gives her 73 through seven. And let's see what Celeste Buckmore can do on the strike. It's the head pin, but very light, and leaves an 8-10 split with a couple of pieces of wood that uh, she might be able to use. Not sure how she's going to get both of those. And then Joanne goes right through the middle again. Little uh, conversation, little discussion with uh, among teammates as to how Celeste is going to play this wood. And she tries to go way to the right, which was suggested by John Starner, and almost makes the spare, but uh, not quite able to get the 10 pin. Meanwhile, Joanne working on that spread eagle again. She takes out the left side. Celeste with a 10 for 93 through 8. Rosano will try and complete the 10 box. Instead, it's a 9. She's got 82 through 8. So they'll hand it over to Sarah Vestal and Lynn Thompson once again. Sarah is working on a spare that she had in the 6th. And she throws a, a nice 1-3 pocket hit and drops 9, leaving the 7 pin. Meanwhile, Lynn Thompson drops 8, leaving the 6-10. This is obviously a uh, key spare opportunity for both bowlers in, in, uh, in a close match. Sarah has a piece of wood at an angle next to the seven. It looks like, and she just goes right by the wood and, and clips the seven by itself. Not sure if she was intending to do that or if, if she, uh, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. In any case, it's a spare for Sarah Vessel and, and a badly needed one. And meanwhile, Lynn goes by the 610 and just knocks the wood around a little bit. And Craig Holbrook goes down to remove a piece of wood that's come out too far. So Lynn will try and pick up a 10 here and she gets a 9. So that's going to tighten the match up even more. Let's see what Sarah Vestal can do with the spare that she recorded in the seventh. She fills it with five, leaving the Kaliri. And there is a strike by Lynn Thompson. Really solid shot right there in the one-two pocket. And Sarah Vestal with a, a good try. She came in pretty full on the head pin, but just took out the one and nine. So she has two, four, seven left. And she just takes out the seven. So that'll be an eight box, giving her 79 through the eighth. Meanwhile, Lynn Thompson has uh, 91 with a, with, two, with a strike to fill. And here's another look at the strike. Really solid shot right there. That's going to bring up Hawk Hallis and Mike Walker. Mike filling his spare in the sixth. This would be a good opportunity to really add to that total. But just two. He you know, kind of lost the ball to the right a little bit. And, and there is a strike by Hawk Hallis. Great shot there. That's, uh, that's a veteran shot right there, Hawk. Has, has uh, been on the scene a long time, and he's come through in uh, clutch situations on many occasions. 
And Mike Walker works out that uh, two drop for a 10, giving him 109. But here's another look at the strike by Hawk Hallis. Kind of a medium, sort of a mixer in the 1-3 pocket, and the 8-pin is the last one to go. Great shot right there. So that's very timely, timely strike. Mike Walker with 7, and he leaves the 1-2-4. Kind of a couple of pieces of wood, but one of them, the, that left wood might be a little bit tricky. Hawk Hallis also missing the head pin, but he came up with uh, looks like an eight. Drop. And Mike Walker runs down that one, two, four for the spare. The wood didn't bother him. And Hawk with a nine on the strike. That gives him 95 through the seventh. Now let's take another look at the spare by Mike Walker. The, the problem here was that the wood to the left of the head pin was in danger of deflecting the ball to the right. And as you can see, the two pin is actually what takes out the four. The ball hits the one and then the two and knocks the two into the four. Right now, it is a one pin lead for uh, John Starner's team over Craig Holbert's team who is leading the tournament. And each team has one mark to fill. Chris Winniard is with a six drop, leaving the three, six, seven, ten, and he just goes by the three pin. <coughs> Dave Dupuy. Also with a six drop and also taking two pins with his second ball, so it's going to be a question of who can who can pin. And uh, Chris Winniars takes a ten box, and Dave with a nine. So this is a very very tight match. As we get down to the closing portion of it. Chris Winniars with a nice ball in the 1-3, dropping 9 and leaving the 5 pin with a, a piece of wood. And Dave with a kind of a full hit on the head pin, uh, got a, a pretty good break leaving the 4-7 with a piece of wood to the left of the 4. And as Chris makes the spare, Dave is looking at this 4-7. Boy, that was a tough break. He put the ball almost exactly where he wanted to, but the uh, that wood deflected the ball around the seven. So it's a nine for uh, Dave Dupuy opposite the spare by Chris Winniards. And if you take a look at this replay, the, the ball hits the left side of that cap, just catches a little bit of that cap, and is deflected it takes out the four pin, but it goes around the seven. So that's a really tough break at this point. In any case, it's a nine box for Dave Dupuy, and that brings up John Starner and Craig Holbrook. John Starner drops, I think that's nine. Yep, nine and seven pin remaining. And Craig Holbrook with a strike. Great shot there. Craig, as you know, is uh, can usually be counted on to come through in, in the clutch, and this is no exception. John Starner makes the spare, so way to stay with him. So this is this is a key spot right here where each bowler will have a mark to fill. Let's see what John Starner can do with the spare in the seventh. And there is a strike by John Starner. Great shot there, just absolutely no doubt about it. Let's take a look at this. Solid, high flush, 1-3 pocket, no doubt whatsoever. That's clutch. So that's uh, 
way to answer Craig Holbrook's strike. Let's see what Craig can do on the strike. Another good ball right there. And it's a little hard to see. Craig would make a better door than a window, but I think he's got a 4-10 split there. Yeah, and he's got a piece of wood. Actually, two pieces of wood that he might be able to use if he can go probably, I would guess, down low. And that's... Wow. Great bid by Craig right there. But... And let's take a, another look at it if we have a, a, a replay. Um, Craig goes just about, I think that's just where he wanted to go. And that first piece of wood was sort of deflected a little bit by the second piece of wood. So one piece of wood went on each side of the 10 pin, both in front and behind, and nothing touched it. So it's a nine. So through eight boxes, the team of spare tires led by Ben Vestal has got 473 with three boxes, uh, three marks to fill. Meanwhile, Craig Holbrook's team has 468 with, with one mark to fill. So it's a very, very close match. Anybody's game. And this promises to be a dramatic finish. We will be back shortly with the conclusion of this match. Do not go away.